Welcome to this video, which is part of a series dealing with some basic concepts about energy performance in buildings, provided by EPB Center team. Feeling lost when dealing with the EPB package of standards? Thinking there are too many standards for the energy performance calculation of buildings? Well, here is a map to help you understand why there are several standards, how they are connected and what's in this package. So here is a map. Traditionally, we start the calculation by an energy balance of the building envelope. To determine how much energy is needed to provide the required services. And the first thing to notice is that it's not only just heating and domestic hot water. Now we are dealing also with cooling, with ventilation, with lighting and it's not shown here, but it's also dehumidification and humidification that is air conditioning. And to control the whole set of technical systems, we also have to deal with building automation and system controls. And at the end of a calculation, we have to convert the delivered energy into some kind of weighted indicators, such as primary energy or CO2 emission or even costs. So here is a map of the calculation process. The calculation is divided into modules so that you can combine them to suit your calculation needs for your specific building, which is a calculation object. And you see here the number of the standards where you can find the contents of the specific module. We start from here. This is the level of energy needs that is the balance of the building envelope to calculate the energy required to provide the desired service. There is one module dealing with cooling, heating, ventilation and also humidification, dehumidification. So you have a temperature and a humidity balance combined together. And you have a separate module for domestic hot water needs and for lighting needs. When calculating the building envelope, you need supporting information. First of all, building properties like thermal transmittance, thermal bridges and solar transmittance of classes. Then you need also the condition on both sides of the building envelope. So you need climatic condition and here you have modules, for example, to convert the data from the meteor station into the data required by the calculation. And then you need the indoor operating conditions like temperature, humidity, ventilation rate, which depends on the activity you are doing inside the building, such as residential, office, school and so on. This includes also heat gains. It is energy coming from solar radiation, so solar gains and internal gains. Once you're finished with the building envelope calculation, you go through the systems. So you need a general description of the calculation for each technical system. Then you have to take into account how you emit and control the emission of the service into the internal environment. You might need a distribution or take care of a storage and you take care of the generation. Well, generation is actually converting the delivered energy carrier into the type of energy you need to provide the service. And very often you have several technologies available. For example, for heating, you might have a gas boiler, a heat pump or a solar collector. That's why you have several modules for the generation part, which are actually alternatives that are available and used on the market. So we have several type of technical system, which are also interacting together. This is the meaning of these arrows. The generation here of the ventilation is what is providing the airflow, that is the air handling unit. And the air handling unit has cooling coils or heating coils which are allowed for the cooling and heating technical systems. That's the meaning of these connections. And to have all these things working together, you need to have a look at the building automation and system control. When finished with the calculation of technical system, you get the so-called delivered or exported energy, which are measured or measurable amounts of energy carriers. And we have to convert them into appropriate 
weighted indicators such as primary energy, CO2 emission and so on. This is a task of the so-called overarching standard, which is dealing with this calculation and with other general aspects about the whole calculation. We also have a specific module about how to express the energy performance of buildings, that is, defining the indicators to be used. So, if you need to find your modules, have a look at this map, locate your module, for example, if you are dealing with heating and storage, here you will have the number of the standard where you can find the module, so that you can quickly get to the desired information. So here is a brief summary. EPB package of standards is wide because there is an amazing variety of new and existing buildings and of available technologies to provide the desired services. You must be able to take into account all these possibilities and the modular structure is what allows to adapt the calculation procedure to each individual combination of building envelope and technical systems. Thank you for listening. This video has been prepared by EPB Center team under a contract with the European Commission. The information and views set out in this video are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the official opinion of the European Commission.